Jesus said, here's the real truth. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Matthew 7, 7 through 8. I stand at the door and knock. But most don't answer. Even though they say they're in Christ. It says the Lord. But they won't open up. They won't receive it. They won't receive any kind of correction. They are bound by self-will, stubbornness, and pride. And they're not going to open up that door while going forward in what they call their walk with Christ. But we have to humble ourselves down. And God will pull this separation on us. Will you feel like God has completely abandoned you? No. This is, this is, a, this is a proof that God is still working in your life. Hmm. That's a new idea, isn't it? That kind of thing. Hmm. Job 23. Two more scriptures, okay? Job. This is just tie in with that. Job 23, verse 1. Then Job answered and said, Even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groanings. Oh, that I knew where I might find God, that I might come even to his seat. If only I could get before the seat of God. I would order my cause before him. I will fill my mouth with arguments with God. And yet, that's not what God's looking for. Verse 8, Behold, I go forward, but God's not there. I go backward, but I cannot even find God. On the left hand, where he does work, but I can't, I can't see him. He hides himself on the right hand. I can't see him there either. But he knoweth the way that I, when he has tried me, I will come forth as gold. See? Some of the best, some of the best possibilities that you will ever have of going up the 11 rung ladder on the apostolic anointing will be at the times where God seems to absolutely and completely have left you. The Bible says, in prosperity, people turn away from me. See, when things are going good, everything's okay, we don't really need God. Okay, I like God, but I don't really need... Yeah, and all the rich people, they don't go to any kind of real church. They don't need that. You try and tell them deliverance, I don't need nothing like that. Everything's okay. That's what it says in the book of Revelations. We have everything. We don't need that. But God says, don't you know? You are blind, miserable, and naked. He says that to the church. When we can't get ourselves to that, to that kind of place. But let me tell you something. You stand one of the best chances of moving up in a higher level in those moments where you're sure God is not there. Because those are the point, those are the places that drive you finally to humble yourself, finally, and to finally come back to prayer, finally come back to reading the Word of God, finally start coming back to church or whatever it is, not, negle not neglecting the assembly of saints, and getting back on your track with God. But the first step has to be humbling. And when you can come to that kind of place, when Hezekiah, we just look at that scripture, when Hezekiah was dying and hopeless, even the best prophet in the land, Isaiah, came and said, you're a dead man. Thus says the Lord, you're a dead man. Prepare your house, you're going to be dead. What did he do? He didn't go, I'm a king, what are you talking about? No. It says he humbled himself, he turned his head to the wall, and he wept. A king weeping. Weeping tears that come from his heart, not crocodile tears, weeping. And going back to God and going, God, I want to remind you. What did he remind God about? All the good things that he had done. All the things that he had tried. All the ways that he had tried. Not trying to barter with God. What was it that moved God? The fact that he went, I did this, I did that, I did. No, it was the tears of humbling that got God's attention and God came back because he humbled himself. But if you got Mr. Pride, Mr. Anger in there, <coughs> no. You can see God's stepping away from you as a defeat, or you can see it as a chance to ultimate and absolute victory 
and an upgrade, depending on which way you're going to go with it, depending on that. Let's end with this. Isaiah 55, verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Your thoughts. Let him return unto the husband. He will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly forgive you. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, says God. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your way. Isaiah 14 says, I will be like the Most High. No, you never will be. You will never sit in the big chair. You will never lead the congregation in the north. The north is the Jesus side, north side of the altar. That's always going to be Jesus' place, no matter how much you puff yourself up and try and become God yourself. It won't work. My thoughts are better than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, the snow from heaven, and returns not thither, but waters the earth, and makes it bring forth the bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread unto the eater, so shall my word be. It goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it will accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the thing wherefore I send it. For you shall go out with joy. What? With joy. If you're not in joy, you're bound by a demon. If you're not happy, you're bound by a demon. If you're a miserable person, you're bound by a demon. Change your mind. Change your mind. It's up to you. You can get up in the morning and you can decide, I'm going to be miserable as hell and everybody around me is going to be miserable as hell. You can come home from work and you can start up with your thing again. And you can start up with all of this stuff and bring demons into your house, bring the darkness into your house, and you can toss and turn all night. That's your choice. That's your choice. Or you can say, no. No more. The Bible says I give sweet sleep on the saints. You can get up in the morning and say, I don't care what Satan does. I don't care what he tries to say, what he tries to do today. I am going to be happy, and I'm going to have my joy, and I'm going to have peace. And anything that I see in me that tries to rob me, I'm going to seek deliverance, even if my husband won't. Even if my wife won't, I am not responsible for them. I pray for them, and I intercede on their behalf, and I pray, Father, help them. But if they refuse the help, they ain't sucking me down with them. I ain't going down with a sinking ship. Jesus is my lifesaver. And I'm going to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For the joy of the Lord is my beginning and my strength. You have to make up your mind how you see it and what you're going to do. And if they try and suck you down, you're just going to have to just turn and go about your happy business. And let them sit over in the corner, banging their head on the wall, if that's what they're going to do. You offer them a chance to be free. You offer them a chance to be helped. Same thing we do in this church. We offer wonderful chances here. But if you ain't going to come, and you ain't going to do it, and you're going to sit home and go, I don't know, I feel that little twinge in my back today. Well, that's you. But because you don't come, don't mean I ain't going to come. I am going to come. We have to make up our mind where we are going to be with this whole thing. For you shall go out with joy, and you will be led forth with peace. Where is the peace? Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Do you have peace? If you don't, you have a demon. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands instead of the thorn, the curse, instead of the thorn, shall come up a beautiful fir tree instead of the briar, the curse, shall come up a beautiful myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that you will never be cut 
off, you'll never be divorced. Father, I give you praise. <clears throat> and I give you glory. I know these are some hard things. But these are true things. These are real things. And Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that these things are going to take a hold. That they're going to take root and begin to sprout things into our life. <coughs> the things of God. We pray today, Father, remove the thorn, remove the thistle, remove the trap, remove the ugliness, the filthiness, the darkness, all the ugly things in our mind, all the ugly things that we're saying and doing and thinking, every terrible thing that Satan does right before we walk into church to try and get us going, which he does with all of us. Take that away, Father. We're not bound by our past. We are bound into the promises of the future. That's where we're going. That's where we're going. We thank you, Father, that sometimes it looks like you're just really taking away all the blessings of everything we worked so hard for and everything we had our high, high hopes on, but it was a trap, a complete trap. And we couldn't see it at the time. We just couldn't see it. We were completely blinded by our love or our lust or our want or what we thought. The Bible says what's right in a man's eyes can still lead on to destruction. There's a way that seemeth right on a man, but leadeth on to destruction. You know the thing that happens later on down the road when God gets you out of one of these things where you're going, oh God, here we go again. You, I worked so hard and now you're... Can't I do anything right? Can't anything... Is that after you get away from it and you look back, you know what you're saying in about three months? Six months? Thank you, Jesus, you got me out of that. That would have been such a big trap for me. When I finally see what kind of person they really were, what it really was going to be. Oh, my God. You think you got it rough now? Now you can see. But you couldn't see it then. You are just too blind. You tried to go be with the wrong person. You tried to get in the wrong kind of job. You tried to go the wrong kind of way. And God cut you off and you were so heartbroken, so disillusioned. But now you look back and you go, thank you, Jesus. Because that's the wisdom of God. We'd be smart just not to go kicking and screaming all the way with God. But to trust Him. To trust Him. And Father... We ask forgiveness for all the times we did not trust you, that we wanted to go our own way. We were now listening to Mr. Pride and Mr. Anger and Mr. Self-Will and Mr. Stubbornness instead of just listening to the reasoning of God. We thank you, Father, for saving us. We are grateful. We know that you have the wisdom. You see the big picture. We're just like little ants down here. All we see is the grain of sand in front of us, but you see the whole hill. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Help us get free from all this stuff. We don't want to keep being tormented by all these demon voices that just keep trying to trick us and lead us into all this kind of stuff. We don't want that anymore. We want a clear mind, clear thoughts. We want to come to the place of rest. You said, be still and know that I am God. Father, let us be comfortable even in the still times. Let us not be driven and pushed continually more, 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 more like a driven slave. But let us come to the place where we can have rest and peace within our lives, even though we're still working and doing things for God. Anything of the enemy, Father, that needs to be removed today, anything that needs to be done today, every tormenting voice, every destroyer, every destructive thing, everything turning us against our marriage with God, everything turning us in our marriage against our husband or against our wife, anything turning us against our prayer partners or against our friends that are good and godly friends. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you remove that thing today and you bring peace back to that thing. You bring Jesus back into that thing right now, Father, I pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we're not guilty. There's no condemnation in those in Christ Jesus as long as we're not doing it in the flesh. Help us to bring it back to the Spirit, Father. 
We know you're not blaming us. You're trying to help us. Father, we ask to be, if we have broken our marriage contract with you, we ask to be remarried. We want to come back to our marriage, Father. If we've been unfaithful in our marriage with you, we ask you, Father, in our humbling ourselves and saying our sorry, out of our confessing, our getting out of track in our marriage, we ask you, Father, bring us back into it right now. In the name of Jesus, we commit ourselves. We recommit ourselves as the daughter and the bride back into our first love with Christ right now, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus. Anything that is here that's going to try and get away of that, we come against the curse in our family of generational divorce and generational separation. We come against these curses right now in the name of Jesus. We come against everything we've said of not, I'm not going to trust anybody ever again. I'm not going to let down my guard ever again. It's better off I just stay alone and isolated because I've already found out I can't trust anyone. Everybody's a, back, everybody's a backstabber. All women, eh, all men, eh. and all these kind of things that we say that give demons power. God said, it is not right for a man to be alone. Satan goes, I need you to be alone. I need to be your advisor. Well, who's right? Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Help get us free. Help get us free right now, Father. I come against the tormentor right now in the name of Jesus. I bind every one of these tormenting, destroying, destructive spirits in the name of Jesus. We come against it right now. And I come against this demonic rescuer that, that wants to give everything to everybody and can't say no, even when they're out of step with God. Instead of making them face their own way, let them find out what happens when they get out of step with God. We come against this in the name of Jesus and all these kind of things right now. We commend it in the name of Jesus by the blood of the Lamb that you have to go right now in the name of Jesus. I come against the spirit of unhappiness, unhappy and miserable in the name of Jesus. And we command that you've got to release right now. I believe you just take a deep breath right now. And just let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. Pressure. Pressure and stress. I command you in the name of Jesus that you've got to come out right now. You've got to come out. 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 You've got to come out all of the woundedness, all the woundedness of your past from everyone who's betrayed you and took advantage of you and cheated you and lied to you that now you project into your future. We command that has to come out, has to come out, has to come out, unable to trust, unable to trust anymore. We command it in the name of Jesus that you've got to come out, unable, whatever that thing is in there that goes, I don't care, even if somebody tries to love me, I ain't going to let them love me. I ain't going to allow that. I ain't going to allow that because I already know how that's going to, all this kind of stuff. We come against that in the name of Jesus. Self-fulfilled rejection. Rejection in your life that even when people don't reject you, you make them reject you. We command that to come out. We command that to come out. We command that to come out. Arguing and fighting in Jesus' name. Got to come out. Got to come out. Miserable, come out. Miserable, miserable. Miserable. Miserable, come out. Unable to have rest or peace. In the name of Jesus, whatever that thing is blocking that, I command you to come out. Unable to have rest or peace. Always chasing something out of the promise of, if I just get this, if I just do that, all I got to do is just catch one fish bigger than the one I ever had before. All I have to do is have a better car than I ever had. All I have to do, and then you go and you get do that thing, and now Satan goes, yeah, but there's still bigger ones out there. And you're just unsatisfied. We come against unable to ever be satisfied. Unable to ever look and go, man, I am so blessed. By the fact that you look and you, have some, you see somebody who has more than you. And yet you look at your life and you are blessed. Thank you for, your health, for our health, Father. Thank you we're able to walk around. We thank you, Father, that we're not dead yet. We're not dead. We're not paralyzed on some hospital bed with tubes coming out of us. We don't have any of that kind of stuff, even though Satan says, oh, yes, you do, or you will tomorrow. No, Satan's a liar. We come against that in the name of Jesus. We come against that. We come against that, and we command you in the name of Jesus that you've got to come out. You've got to come out. 
You've got to come out. I come out. I come against every adultery curse in your family line. Every adultery curse in your family line. Anybody in your family that ever committed adultery, which is why you have strongholds of hatred and strongholds of distrust that came from that. From all the anger and all the rage in your family from those cheaters, and now you think everybody's a cheater, so you don't trust anybody. We come in and it has to come out. You have to come out. You have to come out. You have to come out. All the Jezebel, all the Jezebel control and manipulation. We command that has to come out. We command that has to come out. Have to come out. We call out the Ahab strongholds of Ahab, the man who is unable to stand as the priest in his home. In Jesus' name, we command that to come out. We command that to come out. I call out every counterfruit of the virtuous woman that stops you from having all the fruits of a virtuous woman according to what God says you could have. And we command that to come out. We command that to come out. We command that to come out. I call out whatever it is that Satan always does Saturday night or Sunday morning or Tuesday morning that then convinces you that you shouldn't go and get more deliverance, that you shouldn't go and hear the word, that you should just stay home. We command that to come out. We command that to come out. We command that to come out. Discouragement, discouragement in the name of Jesus. So discouraged and so frustrated, just ready to give up and give in and quit everything. We command that to come out. You have to come out. You have to come out. You have to come out. Isolation, we command you to come out. Isolation, 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 living in your own world. In Jesus' name. Whatever it is that Jesus is naming right now, you have to come out. Mr. Pride, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind you in Jesus' name. I command that stubborn, rebellious pride out of the family line right now. In the name of Jesus, we command you to come out. We command you to come out easily offended. Easily offended and easily hurt and easy to anger. In Jesus' name. You have to come out. 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 I call out, I call out whatever voice it is, whatever thing is in there that has tricked you into believing you're sick. That has tricked you into believing that you have a disease or that you are sick or that you're going to die early. I command you in the name of Jesus to come out. I command you to come out. I command you to come out because you were healed 2,000 years ago. That's the word of God. You were healed 2,000 years ago. And whatever it is that has blinded you from that fact into buying into, I command you, you have to come out. 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 Hopelessness, come out. Hopelessness. Hopelessness and helplessness in Jesus' name. Everything in there goes, I tried everything. No. You haven't tried everything. You didn't try coming here today until you came here today. So you can't say you tried everything. Man of the Gate Beautiful said that a thousand times. Till finally somebody walked up with Jesus. And he had his personal appointment. But he had to be there, didn't he? Had to be there. Satan goes, well, if I'm not there, Jesus will come to my house. No, he won't. Or, eh, he might, but you're, <laughs> but you're probably not the way it's going to be if God has preordained you into a season of time of being somewhere and you're out of God's season. We command you have to come out. 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 Rebellion. Rebellion. Rebellion to the head of the household in the family. Rebellion to your ministry. Rebellion to your calling. Rebellion to your calling in Jesus Christ. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Rebellion is witchcraft. We command you to come out in Jesus' name. Stubbornness is iniquity and idolatry. I command you in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Rebellion.